morning YouTube. First of all, just a massive apology to all my subscribers out there. I appreciate I haven't got any content out in quite a while. Things have been very busy here. I've had lots of changes at work, one thing or another. I just haven't had the time to be able to do anything for you. As you can possibly tell by the echoey room that I'm in, I'm sorry about the audio quality. We've moved out of our present residence and we're moving into another one, uh, which means my shed with all my 3D printing stuff is empty and everything's in boxes. So I've got no way of doing any recordings or any reviews or anything in there. But while this property is empty, I thought I'd take this opportunity to chuck a video out for you. I have here from my friends from Artillery, a Hornet, which they sent me quite some time ago. Now I appreciate a lot of people have done unboxings for this already. Um, but like I say, I just haven't been able to do it. But I will do one with you today. I've got to thank the people from Artillery for sending this to me because they've done that free of charge. It is not, I'm not getting paid for doing this review. It will be an honest review. It will be my thoughts. We're going to do it in a one shot thing. So there's no editing involved. We're going to start the camera rolling when I start opening the box and we're not going to stop it until we've got a print coming out of it. So fingers crossed it doesn't take long to build. Fingers crossed it works at the other end. But that's how we're going to do it. We're going to basically do it like a live stream, but without the actual stream. And then we're going to get it banged up on the internet. Like I say, I haven't paid for this. This was sent to me free of charge by Artillery, but it's not a paid promotion because they are not paying me to review this machine. They're literally giving me the machine to review. But it will be honest, it will be fair, and it will be what's and all, like I say, one shot. They've got one chance, either it works or it doesn't. Anyway, enough of this waffle. Let's get on, let's get this unboxed, and let's see how the Artillery Hornet measures up. So, as you can imagine, empty property, I've got nothing to open the box with. Scrabbling around in the bits and pieces that were left, I found a kebab skewer, so we'll use that to open the box. I just hope they've got enough tools in here for me to build it, because, like I say, I have nothing. So, as usual from artillery, a well-sealed box. You can tell it's been a while, can't you? So, firm on the top, and that's what the inside of the box looks like. I've no idea whether that's in shot or not, I cannot tell. Like I say, nothing I can do about it. One shot deal. Let's have a little wander around and see if it was actually in shot. Oh, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, who can tell. This could go terribly wrong. So, first thing out of the box, as usual, artillery, the little pencil case type thing. In here we have, well, there's some spare wheels, there's a spare nozzle, there is a SD card and a micro SD card adapter and a USB to uh, SD card adapter as well. So you've got that little adapter that looks like some sort of spaceship. Micro SD card adapter with a micro SD card in it, which is, oh, drop between our fingers, four gigabytes. So it's not massive. I'm sure there's some stuff on there, which we'll find later. Like I said, there's a pair of wheels, a spare nozzle, a couple of cable ties, and a spare end stop. There is a, a good quality, or a better quality, 8 and 10 mil spanner. That's a good sign. Small USB lead. Some Allen keys. A small piece of PTFE tube and four small screws. And that's it in there. An artillery hornet manual. 
which seems quite pretty. Yeah, all seems quite nice, seems quite well laid out, even explains how to tighten up the eccentric nuts for the wheels. Good point, well done, like that. So in the box next, spool holder. This is the cable that connects between the hot end and the main part of the, uh, the printer. Now this has caused some issues with some people saying that this isn't replaceable and this will cause issues. Um, I think it was Norris worked out that one way you can push it through and out the other end. So the theory is you just get another piece of PTFE tube and push it in and push it round and push it out and replace the PTFE tube. There was also talks of not being able to do cold pulls with it and the such. But there, there was a way of dealing with it. Um, Artillery actually sent me some graphics to show how to deal with that situation. If I remember, I'll put them in the video. I can't put them in now because we're doing the one-shot deal. But I will put them in at the end to show the email that I received from Artillery explaining how to deal with that issue. Because uh, like I say, some YouTubers pulled it up and said, mm, well, it could be an issue. Well, there's ways around it. Anyway, we won't waffle on with that. We're not talking about that, we're talking about the printer. Foam. More foam. Go. I've just come across our first issue again. There we go. This carriage, it's got the special plug on the end. One end goes into, the other end goes into the hot end. There is also the Z probe or Z probe. Um, plug there. There's another plug down the bottom here. I don't know what that one's for yet, but my issue is going to be cable ties, nothing to cut them up with. So I might have to disappear for a minute. You will talk so much yourselves, won't you? That's good. Right, so we've got that out of the box. Inside here, you'll see there's a label at the top here, which has got a picture of the hot end on it, just so you don't forget that the hot end is actually sat in this hole in a bag it will come out i promise you it will come out there we go so there's your hot end assembly in, it's almost like an anti-static bag now i'm not sure what you can see here but you've got heat sink uh sorry heat block the heat sinks actually behind it here there's your nozzle it's clearly had some filament through it black filament through it so it's been tested the thermistor is there there's a little breakout board here which has got um, one for the thermistor and the two fans on that side. That's for the heater cartridge and that is for... Ooh, that is for a fan. So it's fan, fan, thermistor, heater cartridge and then this one that disappears and I can't... Oh, fan on the front. So three fans, three fans. And the other bits and pieces. So that's all on there. You've got your almost like aircraft style socket on the top uh, that's all metal that's an injected molded piece which is quite nice um, it's clearly removable there's a couple of screws on top to take out to remove that so you can then replace the fans the fans are held in by plastic push fits which go through and onto then clip into place so you just nip them Pop them out. So if you want to change the fans, you can do. Completely replaceable. Power lead, UK plug. That always comes in useful because I've got UK plugs or UK sockets even. A bit more of this stuff to come out like that. And then we're down to the the main part of the printer. It's got a bit of weight to it, is that? I think that's it. So we'll chuck the rest of the box out of the way. And here we are down to the main part of the printer. Seems quite nice and compact in size. You've got this front section here, which is all one pieces of injection molded. Um, your little screen, which seems quite small. Full size SD card slot there. Your wheel there. Um, on the bottom, bottom even. You've got rubber feet, 
which is nice. Uh, power supply there. It's already set to 220 volts. Well done artillery, got that switched the right way. Um, not quite sure who's made the power supply. It's a ZL uh, 36024. It's 24 volt, 15 amp output. On this side is your USB. On the back there, there's your power plug and your switch and a fan. And it just says Hornet in bits and pieces. Uh, eight kilos apparently it weighs. So at the back there, you've got your end stop switch for the bed. Bed is quite loose at the moment, so we'll have to make sure we tighten that up. There is a strain relief bracket here for the bed, which is nice to see. That cable goes into the back there. We have that plug that goes up into the, the gantry and parts there and that. So yeah, seems fairly straightforward. So the first thing to do is to get the spanner and we'll try and tighten up these eccentric nuts on here to uh, get the bed, not only stop it from wobbling, but get it square as well. So I'll have a quick look underneath. Let me see if I can show you the underneath a bit. I doubt I can, not with my one shot camera. But as you can see, they're quite large screws for levelling the bed, yellow springs, and then it runs on it's four wheels rather than three and the eccentric nuts are actually on this side so we need to come to this side to do them get this nice spanner in that they provided and let's see if we can't get that to nip up to where it needs to be that's getting better Okay, do the front one now, that was the back one I've just done. Yeah, get in there now. Okay, that's the front one. Then well, we've just got to get the back one finished off. We've gone the wrong way there, but there we go. We're very nearly there now. This is exciting, isn't it? It's like a live stream without the fun. There we have it. Marvellous. So that's that done. Yeah, beautiful. Right, so gantry on. <sighs> I'm guessing by the fact that this cable comes out here, that this goes into this side. So, yeah, seems straightforward. Do we fit that first? No, nope, we're going to fit this first and then we're going to fit the, the hot end assembly onto there. So that would appear to be four screws like that. Interesting that the stoker motor is at the top rather than at the bottom. Uh, so it's inverse from what you would expect. Um, got the nice little screw there for altering the tension on the carriage on that belt which is very nice to see well done artillery let's get this over on its side let's get these four screws in of course we'll use the provided allen keys as i don't have anything else So if that would stay, I have to use my teeth, aren't I? Don't try this at home, kids. That stuff's just gone absolutely everywhere. 
If you saw where that lot went, you can remind me later. So we'll get those two something like in. Won't tap them all the way just yet. And we'll just get them sort of slightly less than finger tight, which then leaves me a little wiggle room to make sure everything's square before I nip it up. I've got haven't got my steel T-square available. Again, it's packed away, so I can't check for absolute squareness. So again, we're relying on the manufacturer of the, uh, the thing for it to work and for it to be square. I'm wondering what's the best way to get to these. Let's see if I can do it this way. I just don't want to put too much undue strain on the uprights just while we're tightening up. So I'll just do it that way and get those started. And we can only print what is on the SD card because again I've got no computer with me. I've got nothing. This is just literally my camera, my mobile phone, sorry, uh, an empty room, a tripod stand, and a power supply, and a printer, and a roll of filament, of course. I think it's Airy One Blue PLA. So we'll get that screwed in. The uh, there is a kind of look, isn't there, to this printer? It kind of looks like it's uh, is it Bumblebee from Transformers. I'm not a big film fan of that sort of genre, I'll be honest with you. Um, but yeah, it's got that sort of Bumblebee-esque look to it, hasn't it? Um, so that's those done. We've got those tightened up. So that's how it stands. Um, I guess it's just a matter now of getting through these somehow, which could be interesting. Uh, hmm, how to get these off when I've got nothing to do it with? Hmm, because <laughs> they're quite tight as well. We may need to do a non jump cut, jump cut in a minute, where I just run off and leave you and come back with something to get through those because I don't appear to have anything to hand. At all. I'm, as you can see, I'm racking my brains while I'm talking to you. Um, but no, there's nothing here. So talk amongst yourselves. I will not pause this. I will keep it going. You take a look at the machine. I'll be back really, really soon. Right, this is getting really desperate. All I've been able to find is a PTFP cutter. So this could get very interesting. If you see any blood, try not to worry about it too much. It's only mine. This is not going very well, is it? Maybe I can get in there. There we go, that's that one off. And then somehow I've got to try and get into this one. I can do that one there. Nothing is insurmountable. So there we go. So that's now, oh, that's smooth. And we'll bring that across like that. Now we'll check for wobble on there. Nothing. We're going to check for wobble on there. Nothing, so they're good and tight. 
not too tight. It's still uh, still movable, so I don't think I need to alter those at all. So cable wise, let's see if we can just work this out. So that big slot I showed you last time that's under here, that one goes into. And I think the whole idea of this was that it was a fairly easy machine for younger people to build. Um, so there are very little parts needed to be wired up, uh, which is glaringly obvious by the fact that um, you've got this special cable with your PTFE tube and stuff. So we've got that in. We've got a black plug to connect here, which I'm guessing just pops into. No, you're going one way, can't it? Yeah. So that's the other good thing. All the connections are all just one way. So the theory is, and I said theory, you can't get it wrong. So that's that one into there, like that. That's all that. I've got a white one here, and I'm not sure where that white one goes. Don't. Ah, here we go. Look. Oh, I nearly had to look at the instructions. That goes into the end stop that's here. Like so. So that's that connected, that connected, that connected, that connected. Got to get this thing on, haven't we? So that sits on there. And there are three holes there, and there are four of these little screws. So I'm guessing it's these plus a spare. So we'll put the middle one in first to hold the hot end assembly in place. So put that on there, find the right size Allen key. I'm going to guess at this one, which probably means I'm wrong. Right, first time. It's a good job I'm recording, really. So that goes into there like that. And we will screw that home. I have realised when I went out to find the PTFE cutters that you can't actually see my face most of the time. So that's a bonus for you. You can see the printer. That's the important thing. The fact that you can't see me is just an additional bonus for you. So we'll have that one go into there. As you can see, it's been a while. Now that is just a little something artillery. If you'd got me a slightly longer Allen key, I could have got that in there without having to wiggle and wobble about like this, trying to get it into place. So, if you could just think, even with your accessories, things like that are important. If that Allen key had been a centimetre longer, 10 mil longer, it would have cleared the front of that and it would have made winding that in a lot easier. You see how it just fits there? If it had just been that bit longer to cover that point, that would have made all the difference. But it's not insurmountable, but it's just the little things. You, the thing is, is, if it was right, you wouldn't notice. But because it's not right, you do notice. That's the three in. I think it's only three. I can't see a fourth one anywhere. If there is, I've completely missed it. But I can only see three there. So I can only imagine that the fourth one I've got is a spare. So that's like that, that's like that. Now I've got a funny feeling. Does that need to go into there? No. No, don't know what that's for. Maybe we'll find out later. So that's that in. Has this got a specific way it needs to go in? Doesn't look like it. So we will push. That just got an arrow on it. That's just got an arrow on it. It's got no directions that says which end is which. So we'll put that end into there like that. And we'll screw up the collet or collar. It goes around the outside. Whether that's in or not. Get that in, get that tight, and then we'll do the same at this end. Put that into there like that. But like I say, there is actually a back of this breakout board. 
there is a place for a Z probe. Now we haven't got a Z probe, but there is a place for one. So that's interesting. Now then, I see, yeah, so that's your filament. So where's my spool holder? Spool holder, I'm guessing is on here somewhere. Now there's some inserts there that go inside the, the 2040 rails. So this must go beyond that. So I'm going to go with the fact that it sits here. I'll bring the boat back. Remember always to do that slowly because it does generate electricity because it is a step motor. So that goes in like that. Then we've got the power. I don't know that we're not actually there. I'll be honest with you, I can't see anything else that we need. So put the power in, like that. Yep, see? Put that in there like that. Make sure that is in the off position. We will turn that on. Like I say, I've checked the power supply already. It's already set to 230. So now that I've assembled it, which didn't take long, did it? We can now remove this. Now I can see it says on here 220 volt, but I am 100% certain this is a 24 volt bed. So this is just pointing out that it's a UK spec power supply that comes in it. It's not a mains voltage bed, it's a 24 volt bed. But that tells me that it's a, a UK set power supply. So that's all good. So that we've got that, we've got that, we've got that. Before we start it up, I'm going to wind it down until I hear the click of the end stop and see how close the nozzle is to the bed. Because that's always good to check before we go any further. Right, there's a good bit of clearance there, so I know I can safely turn it on. Um, so let's do that. Let's hit the switch and see what happens. Well, we've got power, we've got the artillery logo. Marlin 2.0.7.2. And there we go, up to power. So the next thing we will do, we will bang the SD card in. And that, it says media inserted. I don't know whether you can read that. Just let me come round and see if you can actually read. Well, you can see the printer. Let me just move you a little in. We're going to, like I say, still a one shot deal. We've been going 25 minutes. So there you go. I'm sorry about all the shaking. I'm sure that can't be very nice for you. So there you go. Nice sort of black screen. So we can go down to, what's the configuration say? Oh, you've got a setting for the LCD contrast. Preheat PLA config, very good. Advanced settings, set home offsets, very good. Junction deviation, steps per millimeter. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we can come out of there, go back to main. Oh, we've got a, a bed levelling option. So let's go down to level corners. Oh, something there isn't right. That's clearly lower than I thought it was. So we've got a slight mark across the bed. So let's tighten that bed up before we go any further. We also seem to have some wobble on the lead screw, so we might need to have a little look at that in a minute, but let's get, let's get this bed lower first. There's something not right there, but let's just, I'm just eyeing the bed in for the minute. I don't 
take time. I think we've got an issue in here somewhere, but we'll carry on for now. But it doesn't seem to be going up and down. But we'll uh, we'll take no prisoners. if we can get Z to move. Hmm. I think we might have a faulty switch. Interesting. So you just bear with me, I'm just going to try something out. So disable the left that, do move axis again. Let's move Z. So it doesn't matter which way I turn that, it's coming down. Interesting. Ah, we have a bent pin. Now that could have been me, but we have a bent pin on this stepper here, and it could be that that bent pin wasn't going into the socket properly. Let's see if we can get all these pins in correctly. Let's see if that's any better. There we are, look. 
So basically what happened is when I put that socket in at the back, uh, one of the four pins was bent down like that. So as it went in, it wasn't making a connection. So just straighten that up. That appears to have made the steppers a lot better. So let's do There we go. So, immediate panic over. But like I say, this is why we do these things, because this is how we find these problems out. Okay, so let's do, go into the levelling menu again. So this is a nine point level. Um, we'll use this piece of paper to do it. I mean, really, you should be using what we say in Yorkshire, skeg of eye. Do that better when I've done the third one, I think. Ah, now this is actually allowing me to move Z to level the bed rather than actually turning the wheels. Right. So we're not going to do it like this. We're going to do. I've just run through this. Is this a new thing I don't know about? I've not seen this before. So, what we'll do is we'll do the four point first. See, it says levelling done. We'll do level corners first. So, we'll get into there. That's good. And we'll go to the next one. It's been so long I've forgotten which way to turn the, the wheel. It's almost like having a complete amateur doing it. <laughs> Nearer than you think. Oh, jump around the back. So this is easy to do when you've got it on a bench like this. Possibly not quite as easy in your house on a workbench. I think that back corner is way too high as well. Let's get that loosened up before we go any further. I tell you it was far too tight because I was struggling to get any movement. The spring was, was almost completely relaxed on this one which was telling me that there was too much tension on this side so the bed was bending far 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 too much. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's actually quite good in the middle, is that? That could be a fairly level bed. So, first point again. Always do this at least twice. Because every single one that you turn actually alters the whole level of the bed. But you should know this, shouldn't you? It's like teaching your grandmother to sock, it, sock eggs. I think I just pulled the cable out then. Wasn't very good of me, was it? I pulled the cable out. 
pull the cable out the back by leaning on it. a little tight. Yeah, that's not half bad. Well, so now let's do this nine point. So we'll do it done. We're going to bed level. So what this is actually letting us do is change the Z for these each individual nine points at 0.025 of a mil. So you can do that. Go into 0.2. So this isn't altering the bed, this is actually mapping a level for the bed in the machine. Which I think is a very clever idea. So what this is actually doing, it's producing a mesh, is what it's doing. So that's now produced a nine point mesh, which it saved to the machine, which is brilliant. So I can click store settings. So that's now stored in there. So now we can go back to the main menu. Let's see what's on the SD card. Cube G code. So we better get bit of uh, filament in. I'll bring you back out a bit, shall I? Yeah, we've got some Harry One PLA Plus in blue. Uh, does it give me any uh, indication on what temperature? It says 200 to 230 degrees. It says so somewhere around those figures. So we'll do them. At, we'll do it at 215 because that's halfway between the two. And we'll see how that is. Well, we'll, we'll use what it says on the pre-slice for the cube. I think. Just feed that out there. So, how easy it is to fit this? I think I'm going to do that. Ah, so that's what that piece of tube's for. It's a spare piece for there. Push the thumb, and then 
that's the tensioner for that, isn't it? Just don't want to get in everybody's way when I'm doing this. There we go, that's fed in. Which it seemed to do painlessly. So we will do change filament. We will load filament. We will preheat PLA. So it's going to wait for the filament to. I'll do a bit of tidying up. So you see the nozzle going up there 56, 57, 58. It's going up fairly quickly. That's 70. That's 80. It's 90. So you can see the speed that model is heating up. That's a fairly fast heat up speed. That's at 120 now. And it's going to 200. So that is a spare piece for in there. So 170, 180, 180. so that's 200, so let's wait for filament to load. So again, the idea behind this machine was something that was easy for um, students to use, uh, was easy to set up so they didn't lose particular interest in it while doing it. And uh, it's running quietly. The loudest, the loudest, the largest noise I can hear is the power supply fan. It's now purging filament. So their black's coming through, and that's now turned blue. Okay, ask me if I want to purge more. I don't need to purge any more. That is absolutely fine. Whip that off. You can see that's turned to blue. So we can now go print from media, print the cube. So it's taking the bed up to 70, the nozzle to 200. It's already there, so that's fine. So it's now just heating the bed. We're going to move the camera again and I'm going to have a little chat with you while that heats up. Sorry about that, actually, just wearing headphones, that must have been really loud in your ears. Right, so we've been at it 46 minutes. I think we'll call it about an hour, no matter on where we get. So first impressions, yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, I will just want to check I've got my head in shot. Just don't go anywhere, I'm just going to knit round again. So yeah, first impressions, fairly easy to put together as you can see, uh, apart from the fact that I messed up the plug for the stepper motor, which was entirely down to me I think. Um, everything's gone together really well. Uh, I love the fact that the eccentric nuts on this carriage were already tight. I like the fact it's just three screws to hold the whole of the, this uh, sort of the, the heating element, hot end, etc. on. So to swap it out, it's those three, unscrew that, pull it out, job done. Uh, I like its style. I didn't think I would, but I do actually like its style. 
it's still a very well put together machine underneath. It's still very solid. Um, very, you know, good quality as always from artillery. Always the quality of the, the workmanship, how robust they are. I mean, I suppose artillery, you know, <clears throat> plenty of grunt. Um, always seem very good, always seem uh, a good quality machine out of the box. They've done away with the ribbon cables, uh, which people some have people have trouble with. I haven't had trouble with them either on my original X1 or on the smaller machine. The Genius didn't have any trouble with that either. Uh, maybe I was just lucky, but they've done away with that. They've gone to this new system with this this all-in-one integral flexible pipe, which has got all the connections for the hot end on it. Plus, it's got the PTFE tube running through the middle. Like I say, there has been some people saying, well, well how to do a cold pull? Um, how do you, you deal with a problem if you need to replace this? I believe they do sell replacements, but I also believe that one direction you can actually push the tube out. So all you would do is you'd have another length of PTFE tube. You would put it in, say it was this end, you'd push the original PTFE tube up, put your new tube in and force the old tube through and out and then that would leave you your new tube in, measure the ends, make sure you've got the differences right, distances right, sorry, cut them off, away you go. So, oh, oh, and it looks like we're about to start printing. So we're doing a purge line across the front and back, which is good. And it looks like we've got a cube on the go. Doesn't look to be too bad. As you can tell, or as you can't tell, because of the terrible microphone, it's quiet. Like I say, the loudest thing I can hear on here at the moment is the fan from the power supply. Everything else is, is whisper quiet. So, well done artillery for that. Again, using good components. I would imagine probably Ball bearing, twin ball bearing fans, I would imagine, going by how quiet they are. Um, I do like, actually, I quite like this. I quite like the fact that this is just all enclosed in one piece. You haven't got things and wires and stuff flexing all over the place. Uh, of course, this is going to print fairly quickly and fairly well because it is their own G code, pre sliced. Uh, I would be Fairly upset if this didn't print well. It seems to be a bit of a bigger one than, than I'm used to. I'm just going to take a look at the first layer. Do you know that's a pretty decent first layer? It's got to be said, a pretty decent first layer. The, uh, the installation manual, which I took absolutely no notice of at all, it's quite pleasant. Uh, the English in it is, is good. It's clearly been uh, proofread by somebody who has uh, a fairly good understanding of the English language and punctuation. Um, not that punctuation matters to us, but, but it's very nicely laid out with all the, the diagrams and the cover pictures. And it shows you how everything goes. That's the one I had the issue with. Uh, like I say, that was probably more about me than anything else. I don't know whether you can see that. I'll put it over there. That one. That was the one I had the issue with that I'd actually bent the connector down, which is why that stepper motor wasn't working properly. But yeah, it's all... It's all there. It's all very neat and easy to understand. It's got how to level the build plate. It does actually tell you there, you may want to repeat steps five and six, two to three times, which is the four point, because the fact that you turn that wheel will alter this one and that one. So when you turn that one, it will alter this one and that one. Consequently, when you turn that one, it will alter that one and that one. It's just how it is, that's physics for you. So going around two or three times doing it gets you much nearer a level, but then doing the, uh, the manual mesh bed level afterwards was was brilliant. It's clearly got um, 
It's, it's talking about Cura as the slicer that they use with it. Uh, I don't use Cura anymore. Not my kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, and it then goes into German. So we've got English at the front, and then German. Uh, then we go into still German, still German, still German. So there's only English and German in here. No French, no Italian. Maybe they do booklets for two countries, you know, per booklet. So they'll have English and German in this one, French and Italian in another one. I don't know. But it's a nice little booklet, nicely put together. All in all, I would say, it's a nice little machine. Um, I don't know what they, they're charging at the moment. I don't know what the, the costs are for this machine. Uh, again, these prices change massively over short periods of time. Um, I can't tell you how good a machine it is on the fact I've just built it and I'm just doing a test print with it. But on first examination, it's a nice little machine. What I'll do is now, I'll stop waffling, I'll get the camera closer in and we'll actually watch it do some printing. Again, I'm not stopping, so you're gonna get all the rattles and the hums and everything else, because this is virtual live stream. <laughs> See if using the magic of technology. Come down a bit more. She is printing away. And as you can tell, it's quiet. You uh, wouldn't necessarily want it on your bedside table, but uh, no, it's, uh, it's as quiet as any other machine I own, I think. And like I said, the only, the only air, the noise you can hear really is the airflow. It's not even the fan. It's more the airflow through the power supply rather than anything else, which is brilliant. It reckons this is a 10 minute print, but we've only got about four minutes left. So I won't bother to bore you going back to the end of this. What I'll do is at the end of this video, I will add the information I talked about earlier and I will also stick on a few photographs of the finished print um, and then I'll get this uploaded straight away. So this will be on today, which is whatever day we are today, Sunday the 27th of June 2021 and this is probably the last unboxing you will see of an artillery hornet because I think the rest of the world has already done theirs and I am so late to the party, it's unbelievable. So we'll just take you back, give you an overall look of the machine again. I'm sorry if anything's out of focus or not on the screen or anything else, like I say. I am not set up to do this, but I owed it to artillery to get this video out. I owe it to the community <laughs> to get this video out. So let's just get this right back here. So we'll get that in shot. We'll get my ugly mug in shot and we will say goodbye. So we'll come down like that. You need to see me, don't you? 
He had nothing else to say goodbye. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to Artillery for providing the Hornet. Like I say, I haven't been paid for doing this. I have literally been sent the machine free of charge by Artillery to have a look at it and show it to you. Give them some feedback privately. Give you some feedback publicly. First impressions went together really well. Like I say, slight Muppet issue with me with that one connector that the pin bent out of alignment instead of going into the socket it went behind so the stepper motor wasn't working entirely my fault rectified just by straightening the pin pushing the connector back in absolutely fine apart from that it's quite an intuitive menu once you think about it um, I love the fact that you've got the, uh, the mesh bed leveling ability I think that's wonderful. You don't need to put a sensor on it. You can do a mesh bed level like that and it's sorted. I like the fact you've got the belt tensioner on there. There isn't, a, from what I can see, the belt tensioner on the front. There's two Allen bolts there and a plate. So you would loosen those off. You would push that with your thumb to tighten it and tighten those two back up. I didn't need to do that. The belt's perfectly tight as it came out of the factory. Um, nice and compact design. I personally, like this. I think this is nice. I think it's clean. I think if, if I'm right with how you can change the PTFE tube, which I'm fairly certain I've seen somebody else show on the internet, that makes it a lot easier. If not, I'm sure artillery will, artillery will produce them and knowing artillery, they won't be an overly expensive price because they do tend to look after their customers. The one thing and this is one thing I wish artillery would change and it's the bed. I like the bed, I love the addition of the bed but flexible, removable build surface. This is what we need this day and age. Glass beds, these specially set up glass beds with these little pucks in them so it helps them to stick and one thing or another is great. I have had trouble with one of my artillery machines with it sticking so well. I've pulled the power supply out again. <sighs> I mustn't stand behind the machine because I've just pulled the power supply out. But we will see now if it will do a... I don't know if it does a resume or not. I have no idea. Anyway, entirely my fault. I've just pulled that cable out. That will do that. Um, yeah, as I was saying, I would go with a, uh, a spring steel sheet, removable build surface, far superior in my opinion than a glass bed. So artillery, if there's one thing I would ask you to change, get rid of this glass bed, get us a removable build surface, spring sheet, removable build surface, so we can finish our print, take the removable build surface off, pop it off, away we go. That's the end of it. We'll, uh, we'll do some more prints with it. I'll try and make sure I don't keep pulling the plug out of the back because it's the length in front of me uh, when I get it on a desk, when I get stuff built up. Uh, that is nothing, nothing wrong with the machine at all. That is just entirely me and my body and being a Muppet. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I appreciate you dropping by. Um, Hopefully some more videos coming in the future where we get the new shed built. Might even do you a bit of a montage of the shed build, but we'll wait and see. Again, stay safe everybody, take care of each other, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.